Hey guys, Jason here, back with another Dual Masters TCG video. As you know, TCG Explored has been one of our main projects for 2022, and we spent many of the last few months covering the decks that, well, that eventually made the cut. So we've been putting out deck profiles and match footage, and that's been all well and good. But what about the decks that didn't make it? Well, today I am going to be going over the decks that almost made the cut, but eventually were deemed inappropriate for one reason or another. So let's jump into it. The first deck I'm going to talk about is the first deck that we cut from TCG Explored, and that is Zero Nemesis. So Zero Nemesis was built as a Water Darkness mid-range deck, and, well, <laughs> we just found that it wasn't very good. Uh, the origin story for this is I once saw it on the DM Reborn forum and thought it was really interesting. Uh, the way we had envisioned this deck to play would be to win by either rushing the opponent down with Melnia and some of the other weenies, which we could get back with Zombie Carnival. On the flip side, we could try to control faster decks with Zero Nemesis's effect, so we could break shields without worrying about handing over too much card advantage to our opponent. However, we realized that Zero Nemesis was just a clunky card in general, and it didn't do enough for its cost. You know, it's 6 mana 6,000, and it's an evolution. Uh, I feel like it should be a little bit cheaper, or should be a little... It should do a little bit more. And uh, we arrived at the conclusion that we could actually use the same core to build a better deck without Zero Nemesis. So, uh, if, you know, when you're the weak link in your own deck, I feel like that's time to, uh, <laughs> to pack it up. Lastly, we found that the deck was very resource intensive, given how weak it was, and by that we mean it used a lot of staples that could be otherwise used by better decks. So here's the list. We did play Bat Doctor at one point, but it was eventually kicked for Emerald, which was a last minute inclusion. We felt that having more two drops would help uh, the aggro gear significantly, but of course the deck was just uh, not meant to, to last. We have a lot of cards that were a lot of fun to play, like Zombie Carnival is always a good time, and Grey Balloon was uh, really funny to see him again. Unfortunately, even with Core Isle and Cranium Clamp and all the Trigs trying to carry the deck, it just uh, wasn't quite up to, up to snuff, so yeah. Hopefully, though, we can build a deck with Melnia one day, because I think Melnia is a great card. Moving on to our next deck, it is yet another weak link, it is Wise Starnoid. So, Wise Starnoid is the Vortex evolution that I had the most faith in. I think by virtue of evolving off Cyberlord and Lightbringer, it means you have a lot of access to cheap Evo Bait or practical Evo Bait. Now, unfortunately, uh, Wise Starnoid wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be. Now this is gonna, you know, some more backstory on my part. Uh, we saw a lot of Wise Starnoid lists online, or maybe not a lot, but a couple of lists online, which were very much built as like aggro, tribal, light bringer, which happened to have Wise Starnoid as well, but I felt like that would be a disservice to the card because, well, at that point it's not really a Wise Starnoid deck. So we really wanted to take full advantage of Starnoid's capabilities, and we therefore conceptualized our build as an aggro killer. So you kind of forfeit the matchup to control, but you'll always be able to deal with the aggressive, uh, especially the medium speed beatdown decks. Unfortunately, it ended up not being that strong against aggro due to a very weak matchup against Gonta and Pyro. Turns out Gonta is just really, really strong, and the deck not having too many blockers was <laughs> meant that Pyro could just put in all the work. We also realized that it was very similar in presentation and in performance to Warlord Elzonius, which eventually did make the cut. And I say that because they are both water, light, medium speed decks, and they also both have that defensive gear by playing with shield triggers, especially shield trigger creatures. I just found that Warlord Elzonius was much better than Starnoid at pretty much everything, so sadly uh, we didn't pursue it any further. One thing I should admit though is that I think we leaned too far into the gimmick. Well, as you'll see in the deck list, we really wanted to cram a lot of shield triggers, especially shield trigger creatures into the deck to make the opponent scared of breaking, but perhaps that was the wrong way to go about it and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But here's the list. Uh, we have some early drops to police the field, like Vess, uh, Riosol, and Aquahulkus. 
But unfortunately, when you have things like Gaunta and Sirion in the format, 4,000 power creatures, 2,000 to police the field isn't quite enough. Other than that, we have a lot of the usual suspects, and, um, well, Aqua Skydiver is, <laughs> is the card that sticks out the most here. Andrew thought it would be fun, and it did, of course, fit the colors. I thought it was very clunky, but it was also very meme-tastic. Uh, we called Aqua Skydiver McClunky. I saw a Japanese list online not too long ago, and the way they built Y Staranoid was they built it a lot more defensively than ours. So instead of having the creatures that would draw a card when summoned, they instead played Energy Stream, and they also played some cheaper shield triggers. So instead of Aqua Surfer, they played Spiral Gate instead. I also remember seeing Farzi the Oracle, which uh, when destroyed lets you grab a spell back from your graveyard, so that's not a bad way to get card advantage, I guess. And I also remember them playing Palo Alesis to buff their stuff. Uh, I guess in hindsight, you know, you can buff Vest to 4,000 power on your opponent's turn, and suddenly Pyro and Gonta are not as big problems as they used to be. So that's that's probably the route I would take if I were to try Y Stornoid again. But yeah, well, this is just where we left things, so yeah. Next up, uh, speaking of DM12, another deck that we dropped was Phantomac the Giga Trooper. I was really bummed about having to drop this deck. I thought it was a really cool concept. So what the reason we built this deck is we wanted to build a deck that revolved around one of the creatures in Hydru's cycle. So uh, if you remember in DM12, there were these five creatures that could evolve off two things, and then they also powered up the races they evolved off. So Phantomac, you know, by virtue of being Chimera and Armorloid, I felt like there was some some Evo bait with potential, which meant the deck had potential. Back in the early 2010s, I remember some Hydra's decks playing Cranium Clamp. The rationale was Hydra's buffs all your guys and then gives them unblockable. So if you build a big enough board, well, then you can just like OTK your opponent. And then you use Clamp to, you know, stop them from holding cards in their hands, slow down their uh, setup and all that stuff. I felt that was not the best way to play Hydru's because you really forfeited one of Hydru's best traits, which is the speed factor. You know, he only costs four and he is unblockable, so and also he attacks straight away. And so yeah, I didn't that didn't really sit well with me. But I very much like the idea of just building up a board, play Cranium Clamp, and then OTK your opponent. And well, Phantom Act felt like a very good fit for that, because not only did he buff your other guys like Hydra's, making them harder to remove, but he also gave them Double Breaker, which meant that you wouldn't even have to build up as big of a board. So this, the relative slowness of Phantom Act wouldn't be too much of a problem, because, you know, on 4 you want to play your Cranium Clamp anyway. As we tested, I realized that the deck had the same pitfalls as many mid-range concepts, both on this list and outside of this list, being it just can't aggro or control well enough, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, very unfortunate. Now, I'm not sure if that's just because uh, it's hard to build, but I do feel like mid-range decks in the TCG, at least the most successful ones, tend to lead more towards the control end of the spectrum, which can play fast, but most of the time they don't want to. So if we think about things like Rub Control, Merino Initiates, and even Wave Strikers, I think these are all examples of mid-range decks which tend to feel more controlly in nature. But at the end of the day, Phantomac ended up being strictly worse than both Hydra's and Rub variants, and that's why we eventually scrapped it. I remember during the early days, we Damien used to call this deck Bad Hydra's, but we called it Slow Hydra's. I guess Damien gets the last laugh in the end here. So here's the list that we used. I think a lot of the Armorloids and Chimeras are cards that you'll see in other versions of Phantom Act decks. Uh, Smash Warriors, the Grandu, and Giga Rays in particular, I think are very interesting cards, and it really bums me out that we can't use them in decks. I uh, remember we, we used to get a lot of laughs out of playing Giga Rays and saying, Gekimetsuku! in reference to Gekimetsu, Ultimate Dragon God from DM Plays, who could also, like, summon a creature from the graveyard. I know Giga Rays doesn't summon a creature from the graveyard per se, but, you know, six mana is not that big of an ask, so yeah, there's that. Um, Mecha Dragon's Breath was considered at one point, but 
we just, well, we basically scrapped the deck at that point, so we didn't bother trying to fit it in, but it did deal with problem cards like Taj Mahal and Petrova. Though I will say that uh, Phantasmal Horror Gigazabal, or one of the Phantasmal Horror Evolution cards, uh, could also help in that regard. Alright, so we are several decks in, I do still have a couple more. Now, the next deck that I'm going to talk about is Lex Tech. So we are finally changing up the colors. Uh, I really wanted to build a strong nature light deck because that was such a, an iconic combination back in the schoolyard days. And I was thinking it would be really nice if we could give it a facelift, you know, and just make it relevant in the more contemporary Duel Master setting. So Lukia Lex and Techno Totem are the namesakes of the deck, and this was designed to be another mid-range deck with a fast gear, but the primary focus is on tap kill. So you'll notice that usually when you want to deal with your opponent's creatures, you use spells because they're just more efficient, but I thought it might be workable with uh, Light and Nature, especially since the bulk of this deck is creatures who can swing for face. Based on how we built it, it could oftentimes be carried by the combination of Palo Elises and Petrova, but oftentimes it felt very awkward to play, and it also had a lot of bad matchups against decks in the pool. Ironically, Mist Rias ended up taking most of the spotlight thanks to the mana ramp and the power boosts, making it more difficult to remove. And yeah, so it was a combination of those factors that made us decide to scrap the deck. In saying that, I am still very much into the idea of a tap-kill creature-focused deck, or rather a deck that polices your opponent's creatures with your own creatures rather than spells. So Andrew and I were talking, and well, there is actually a final form that could theoretically be in the works. Uh, will that deck ever get made? I guess we'll see. So here's the list that we used. We have a lot of two drops, and then um, we have a lot of guardians as well. I feel like Lukia Lex uh, could be a lot of fun to play, you know, through the combination of Techno Totem and Petrova. You're basically attacking over everything. Unfortunately, it's, I don't know, it's just a little bit clunky, I guess, and Lukia Lex is not as good a card as I once thought it was. It's just a big beat stick, but it's not even as good as Gonta, so yeah, there's that. Uh, most of the time you want to be calling Guardians off Petrova, unsurprisingly. Um, but yeah, I think not too much to see here. Just general good uh, nature and light cards thrown into a 40 card pile. All right, so we've spent a lot of time talking about decks that didn't make the cut because they were too weak. Well, what about decks that didn't make the cut because they were too strong? Unsurprisingly, we tried Fire Nature Rush. Fire Nature Rush is, as you know, an extremely iconic Duel Masters deck. The deck is very simple to play, and it has it has an established track record. You know, even to this day, it still does pretty well in the IDC tournaments, I think. Um, and yeah, so Rush decks being easy to build effectively, I think, made this very appealing. But unfortunately, the deck was just too strong. I think it has no losing matchups, at least in our card pool. The only times that it would really lose are if it broke into multiple trigs, or maybe it's playing against Hydro Hurricane, and then Hydro Hurricane opens with all of the Palo Elysis, and then Fire Nature Rush hits a trig. So I think those are like the only circumstances where Fire Nature Rush loses. I found that the raw power of Gonta made it much more formidable than the Outlier as well, in case you want to argue, hey, you know, why do you have Fire Light Rush, but Fire Nature Rush is not okay. I think this deck is just inherently more consistent, and by having more one-drop attackers, it's also a lot faster. Now, I did think about nerfing the deck, because sometimes I feel like a concept can be really strong, but it can be nerfed in a reasonable and sensible way. We've seen that with Control Decks and the 40-card Limit. We've also seen that with Miraculous Snare. Uh, Slash Charger is also on my radar, and I think it's a card that can work quite well as a one-off. But because this is a Rush deck, you play four of everything. Like, I just couldn't come up with a way to reasonably nerf the deck. Like, what do you do? Do you limit Gonto to one, and then you play three Snip Strikers or Buzz Betuichi? That, I felt like that wasn't a very good solution, so we just decided to not include this deck entirely. Here's the list. Uh, nothing too groundbreaking here. I feel like all Fire Nature Rush decks play the same 32 to 36 cards, and then 
the last four to eight are what the differences are going to be depending on personal preference or local metagame. But actually, when you consider how rush decks are just four of everything, that's really just a one to two card difference. So in our list, we do not have Rickaboo's Screwdriver. We prefer the instant gratification of the spell-based removal. So yeah, that's that's why we have, uh, or rather, that's why we don't have Rickaboo's Screwdriver in here. On the topic of Rush decks, another Rush deck that we uh, talked about doing was Nature Light Rush. So this is a very funky deck. Uh, we still wanted to use the combo of Nature and Light. So this was at the point where we decided to scrap uh, Lex Tech. And we figured that Rush decks were quite easy to build because it's a very simple play style. You just play a lot of cheap creatures. Make sure you have uh, speed attackers for that extra push and enough removal to let your guys get through. And yeah, so that, that that was our rationale at the time. We wanted to make a... Well, I wanted to make a deck with Brutal Charge as well, which I thought this deck was capable of doing, because Nature and Light do have some one-drop attackers that can swing for face. Um, yeah, so the, the main play of this deck was to play a one-drop on one, play a two-drop on two, and then Brutal Charge on three. And then you could search any two out of an Initiate Evo Bait, Glyce Majicula, and T-Dad after breaking two shields with the Brutal Charge. So I guess like um, it, it's a pretty good mix-up if you're if you grab Glyce Majicula, and then you're holding a T Dad. So you you kind of like set up your speed attacker Glyce Majicula play, which you can do on four. Uh, but then if your opponent tries to disrupt you, then they might need a T Dad instead. If you have an initiate already, you can grab Glyce and T Dad. You know, there's, there's some like weird gimmicks and mind games that that you could do with this. Glyce was obviously the main speed attacker, and I guess that in itself poses an inherent problem for rush decks. I think it can be very challenging to make rush decks, especially in the TCG, without fire, because you don't have any natural speed attackers, you have to rely on evolutions. So, at the end of the day, we realized, or at least I felt, that this deck was too gimmicky, and much worse than the outlier. It was a strictly worse version, I felt like. So here's the list, uh, Tulk and Hardy Cap, obviously some pretty good one-drop attackers. No Sniper Mosquito in here because we need the four mana to do a speed attacker Glyce. And, well, Sniper Mosquito setting you back in mana would obviously be a problem for that. I think Poisonous Mushroom was talked about, but eventually we just didn't decide to go with it. Uh, Terra Dragon Archidella Serena could also be a brick at times, obviously. Um, Migalo, a lot of fun to play, but yeah, there's some, uh, some generic aggressive nature like cards here. All right, so moving on to the final deck. It is a deck that was deemed too strong for the card pool. It is Fire Nature Aggro, or steroids, as I sometimes get on the Google Translate. I think steroids might have been a term used in the OCG to refer to aggressive uh, Fire Nature decks, or I'm not sure if that's the Translate function not working correctly, but yeah, Fire Nature Aggro, whatever. So we conceptualized this as a Fire Nature Bombazar deck minus the Bombazar. Fire Nature Bombazar was a relevant deck in the early OCG days, I also figured that, you know what, I could repurpose some of the earlier ideas. Uh, this was the last deck that I tried to build before deciding on the final lineup for TCG Explored. It tried to use Brutal Charge, which is something that we already talked about, and it also tries to use the combination of Gaunta and Pyro, but, you know, rather than it them being backed up by some one-drop attackers, uh, the, the deck would be a little bit slower, so maybe the opponent uh, could have more time to react to Gaunta and Pyro. Turns out, no, uh, Gonta and Pyro is still a very oppressive card combination, uh, given our card pool. Uh, but the thing that really made me decide that we shouldn't build this deck is that it seemed to invalidate some of the other decks in our card pool. I feel like Twin Cannon Turbo and the Dragon deck in particular, uh, they do similar things to this deck, but they're much worse, and I really didn't want to run into that situation, so I just... Yeah, decided to, to scrap this, sadly. The deck was already pretty good, so I this is actually the first or second revision of the deck. I th no, no, second revision, because in the first revision I had Searing Wave. In the second, I decided to put in Volcanic Arrows. Uh, Volcanic Arrows, I think, is a card that doesn't get talked about enough in the TCG. I think it's an extremely versatile card, and this deck, being a fast deck, could you know benefit from it. You could use it to remove opposing threats, which might revenge kill you, um, it's a defensive trig of sorts, 
Uh, but it's just so cheap and very mana efficient. Uh, I really like Volcanic Arrows in this deck. Originally we had Zeering Wave, but that was a bit slow. You can tell this is also a very early version because we only have eight two drops. I feel like this deck could benefit from having more two drops, but you know, using the flawed quick math, uh, eight and 40 is one and five, we should always open with one. But no, uh, if I were to revise this deck, yeah, I would probably look at putting in maybe like two more two drops or something. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that discussion, and I hope this video was able to be of some service in case you were looking to build around some of the concepts that I talked about earlier. And also let us know in the comments if there were any decks that I talked about which you're particularly sad about not making it into TCG Explored. I'm curious to know. But as usual, thank you guys so much for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.